In this video we'll take a look at the features of plate tectonics and we'll need to start by taking a look at the structure of the Earth. The Earth is about four and a half billion years old and it began as a molten ball. It's been cooling ever since. The most cooled part, the crust, is solidified lighter materials of, like oxygen and silicon that float on top of the denser layers below containing magnesium and iron that are still molten. The crust is made of solid, brittle rock. A continental crust, like the crust we see here and here, is actually made up of lighter rock, like granite. Oceanic crust, which you'd find underneath the oceans, is made up of denser rock, like basalt. Um, the crust is made of lighter elements, such as silicon and oxygen. The next layer down, if you could travel through the crust, you would actually end up in the mantle. And the mantle is made up of two parts. Both parts are made of magnesium and iron. The upper mantle is partly molten rock as thick as toothpaste. The lower mantle is solid. If you keep traveling through uh, the mantle, you'll reach the core. And again, the core is broken down into the outer core and the inner core. The outer core is liquid iron and nickel. If you travel further down, right into the center here, you'd be at the inner core. And the inner core is also made of iron and nickel, but it's not molten. Even though it's very, very, very hot, uh, in the center of the earth, hot enough to melt iron and nickel, there's so much pressure from all the layers above that it, it still remains solid. Tectonic plates make up uh, the crust and upper mantle which form the lithosphere and this is the area we're going to be talking about most of all also in conjunction with the mantle. Um, something else that's kind of interesting is that we talked about how the inner and outer core were made up of iron and nickel and scientists believe that because one of them is liquid and the other one is solid uh, they're rotating at different speeds as the earth rotates and that this accounts for the earth's magnetic field. We're really interested in looking at the crust and the mantle and how those two layers interact. Uh, we need to look below this layer of crust, which the molten material of the mantle that's sitting closest to the outer core here is going to be heated up the most and as a result it's going to expand and rise. And as it rises, it's basically going to get closer and closer to the crust and once it's up here it actually kind of cools. Now it's going to keep moving because there's more mantle material coming up behind it and pushing it along but as it's moving kind of just underneath the crust it's cooling off and it begins to drop down uh, because it cools it becomes more dense and basically the cycle continues it gets heated up again it rises it slowly moves around it cools it drops down um, this motion of the mantle material actually uh, affects the crust because it's going to push the crust around just like if you boiled water and then put uh, some styrofoam on top of it the styrofoam would move around because the water is moving we live on the crust and the crust is the part that happens to be moving and a couple of things happen. Uh, the magma can actually come up right through the crust and actually form uh, a few different features that we'll be looking at. Probably what comes to mind the most is volcanoes. Um, the other thing that can happen is because of the moving of the crust, one piece of crust can actually collide with another piece of crust and in that case uh, what often happens is that one piece, the more dense piece, usually oceanic crust, gets forced underneath the other piece of crust which is usually continental crust and when that happens you actually get a little bit of something called slab pull as well where the crust that's the less dense crust gets pulled down with the crust that's sort of being pushed underneath. Here's a little graphic that shows you how these convection currents work. So if you can imagine this as being the Earth's core and this as being where the crust is located, it's sort of showing you how the mantle material would rise as it's heated and then cool and then drop back down and circulate around. All this movement of the mantle creates areas called spreading centers and there's two different kinds of spreading centers. Basically what happens in both is that the convection currents bring magma to the Earth's surface pushing the plates apart and you can get one of two things happening. The first thing you can get is a rift valley. This is an example of one of the most famous rift valleys, the Great Rift Valley in Africa, and it's shown in red. Okay, and what's happening at this location is that you have 
molten material from the magma coming up and actually forcing two different plates apart from each other. So if you know Africa is pretty much on one plate except for this part over here and if you have the molten material coming up here it's actually going to cause these two plates or these two pieces of crust to spread apart from each other. This is not very common. Rift valleys on land uh, are probably a pretty uh, rare example of a spreading center. So before we move on I just show you that from the satellite, this is a NASA picture, you can also see the, the rift valley. A more common type of spreading center is an oceanic ridge like the mid-Atlantic ridge and what happens here again is that this molten material comes up from the mantle and as it reaches the cold water of the ocean it begins to harden and so you get solid rock. But As more and more this material keeps coming up it has to push the rock apart in opposite directions and so you get what we call seafloor spreading. Another interesting thing that happens to the crust due to the movement of the mantle is we get the creation of subduction zones. And this occurs when plates bump into each other. The denser oceanic plates slide under the lighter continental plates. And part of the continental uh, plate gets pulled under the oceanic plate in what we call slab pull, as I explained a moment ago. So here's an example. This is very similar to what we have here. We could actually almost put Vancouver right here on the map. We've got the Juan de Fuca plate over here, which is an oceanic plate, and we've got the North American continental plate over here. And as the two collide, you get subduction occurring because the oceanic plate is more dense, so it actually dives underneath the continental crust. And some of this molten material actually can superheat these layers of rock and make their way up and this causes volcanoes and we actually have uh, quite a, an extensive volcano chain in this area we call it the Cascade Mountains but if you think a little harder you'll know that um, Mount St. Helens and Mount Hood uh, even Mount Garibaldi in uh, the North Shore area are basically made up of they are basically volcanic uh, mountains so you get the volcanoes forming. The other thing you get forming uh, is earthquakes. We live in an earthquake zone as you know and that occurs because as these two pieces of crust collide sometimes they get stuck and then when they suddenly slide past each other they release a tremendous amount of energy that we call an earthquake. Let's take a look at plate interactions. Uh, tectonic plates contact each other at a plate boundary and which type of interaction occurs depends on the type of plate and the direction the plates are moving. There are three types of plate boundaries. The first is the divergent plate boundary. This is where tectonic plates spread apart and we've already talked about the East African Rift and the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. We've also got divergent plate boundaries in our area. We talked about how the Juan de Fuca plate is actually colliding with the North American plate, but a little bit further out at sea uh, we have the edge of the Juan de Fuca plate and it's meet, meeting the Pacific plate. And these two are actually moving in opposite directions. The Pacific plate is moving away from uh, sort of North America and the Juan de Fuca plate is moving towards it and this would be an area that is a, a spreading center. So this would be a divergent plate boundary. And you can see it right here if we look at it kind of from the side. Uh, this is the Juan de Fuca ridge and this would be the spreading center or the divergent plate boundary. We also have a convergent plate boundary shown here. Convergent plate boundaries um, there's actually three different types possible. The kind that we have shown here is oceanic continental plate convergence where the oceanic plate slides under the continental plate. We've already talked about that. Uh, we get a trench forming in this area as a result of that and pressure can build up and earthquakes can occur when the stress is released and the plates slide past each other suddenly and as we mentioned mountain ranges can form and the, the types of mountains that are going to form are going to be volcanic mountains. So the Juan de Fuca plate colliding with the North American plate forms a volcanic belt. And here's another graphic that shows the same sort of thing. So here would be the oceanic plate, here's the continental plate, and again you can see that you've got, got an area of subduction and you've also got these volcanoes forming. So you have a whole chain of volcanic mountains. 
Uh, another type of plate convergence is oceanic, uh, oceanic plate convergence. This is where one oceanic plate slides under another. And on the same graphic, we can show that right here, or we can see it right here, where we've got something like the Pacific plate sliding past another plate. And basically, what happens is all of this is occurring underwater. And you get uh, volcanoes forming. Uh, we call this a hot spot you get volcanoes forming and you actually get a chain of them possibly forming. The Hawaiian Islands are a famous chain of uh, volcanic islands uh, formed over a hot spot like this. Um, another example would be the Aleutian Islands in Alaska. So you can see this big chain of islands and if you look at the legend you'll see that these are actually volcanoes. Um, so each of those islands is actually at least one volcano. The third type of plate convergence is continental-continental plate convergence. And in this kind of convergence, you don't get subduction occurring. What's happening is that one continental plate actually collides with another. And if you think back to um, the discussion about Pangaea, you'll remember that as those different continents were sort of drifting apart, one thing that happened was that the India landmass floated towards the Eurasian landmass and actually smashed right into it and formed a mountain range that we call the Himalayas. Now, it turns out that the Indian um, subcontinent is actually still colliding with the uh, Eurasian continent and those mountains, the Himalayas, are still growing by about a few centimeters a year due to this ongoing collision. We've actually talked about uh, divergent plate boundaries, we've talked about three types of convergent plate boundaries and there's yet another type of boundary which is the transform plate boundary and this is where uh, tectonic plates slide past each other and earthquakes and faults occur but there's no mountain building or volcanoes. The faults are basically breaks in the rock layers due to the movement on either side and the way that that looks is basically uh, you'd, you'd see something like that down around California where you have the San Andreas Fault and what's essentially happening here is if this is representing one plate and this is representing sort of another plate over here they're not actually diving one underneath the other they're just sort of sliding past each other but they can still get stuck in this area and when they release they give off tremendous amounts of energy and so that accounts for all these earthquakes that you see in, in California. So in our area the earthquakes are mainly because we've got the um, Juan de Fuca plate uh, bumping into and then diving under the North American plate. But in California, what's happening is that you've got the, the Pacific plate actually sliding past the North American plate. And every so often, they, uh, they basically release and give off a tremendous amount of energy. In BC, we have all three types of plate boundaries um, on some scale. Uh, we have got transform boundaries at the Queen Charlotte uh, Fault, which would be further north. Um, so we've got basically plates sliding past each other like this. We've got the divergent boundary out in the uh, Pacific, out where the Pacific plate meets the Juan de Fuca plate. And then we've got the convergent plate boundary right sort of in our own backyard where the Juan de Fuca plate uh, is actually bumping into the North American plate and sliding underneath it. So um, you could say we live in a pretty tectonically active area. In other words, there's a lot of plate movement and um, it's not surprising that this is an earthquake zone. So just to show you here are a few notable earthquakes in our area and these were all uh, really big shakers. You can see the years on them. Some say we're past due a really big earthquake in this area.